Well, we've had two from Tama and two from Fred. Hakeem, you keep, you know, finding a way to kind of skirt around it. <laughs> another way. <laughs> yeah, really, like, stop tap dancing, my dude. Like, get in, hop in. <laughs> back, back in. Give me some oh, more. Give me respect. some more. Respect. No, I'm, I'm out here learning, man. This is, a, I mean, yeah. I know when I joined the, the Facebook group, I was like, I wasn't being facetious. I said, it's auspicious to be invited to this, um, you know, this this network of folks, you know, and uh, again, I, I shouted out earlier, Angelo Dieter, he's a frat brother of mine. Um, and he was like, man, we disconnected randomly. And he was like, oh, you should be part of this. Uh, and so it was, I'm thankful. I'm thankful, thankful to be invited to this today and hopefully stay in communication with y'all, communion with y'all. Cause um, yeah, it's black and it's hot, that's what we do. So um, I wanted to, do, I, I really only prepare two poems. If we go longer than this, I'm going to have to get in my bag, as they say, as the kids say. But um, but uh, I brought a poem for Women's History Month since we just started that. Um, I joke, and uh, uh, Tama, I was saying Tama, uh, was saying earlier, like, you know, uh, I was like, you know, I'm really popular in February in Albuquerque because there's not a lot of us. I'm popular. I feel like I make I make my whole my whole wide in, in, in February and in April, and I'm good for the year pretty much. Um, that's the only time. Uh, they folks, my phone's ringing off the hook. Other times, crickets. But um, but I, I want to acknowledge, you know, I want to acknowledge patriarchy and Women's History Month. So I wrote a poem a while ago in 2013 for our TEDx ABQ Women event, um, and it's old. So part in, uh, I feel like I've grown as a writer since then. I hope I have, but um, it felt appropriate for this space. So it's about Mae Jamison. Uh, it's called Creativity. It begins with a quote. <clears throat> For some reasons of reasons, it is overwhelmingly apparent that the female brain does not rival a man's brain when it comes to math and science, end quote. So she grabbed a telescope to see what kind of God would not make space for her. What kind of idiot savant would phrenologize uterus with IQ in a respectable scholarly journal and call his self scientist. An alchemist is much more than a palm full of snake oil more than scales and skin cells, more than the atheism we cook and crack. In the crosshairs of that scope, she saw pimps standing on the corner of creation and nativity, selling acrylic on canvas, no prints of Mary and manger, sky blacker than universe, than womb. In it, stars look like asterisks, like X, X on top of each other, one tick tock clockwise, 90 degrees, like, you don't know what time it is, she says, under lap coat collar, like impotent men will put their dick in test tubes to try and reproduce the laboratory inside of her. Feudal, those same men, however important, will fit firearms into mouths of mothers on a crusade to barren nations. Frustrated that their black magic will never match her birthright, they will say God made Adam first. She will thank them kindly for the compliment and call herself evolution. Smile and tell them to adopt while she adapts. We are in clinical trials, trying to reproduce a miracle, she belches. Mm -hmm. The future of this species rests in an aberration, inconclusive yet well-documented evidence that one of their gender was able to regenerate without the other. She is between Homo habilis and Australopithecus. She is time travel, nine months of present and future at the same time. She is pregnancy without penis. He is penis without progress. He is original man, primitive. She is S class, opposable thumb. She has made man without man. He has tried to clone her miracle, jealous of how she plays God with herself. One day he will worship her for the nucleus she is instead of the warfare he wet dreams her to be. Till then. He will dismiss this report, file it away in the annals of science and tell her this sort of study, this sort of research is heresy. He will unbend his lips and innuendo his brow as he lets her know what is at stake. Shrug it off by trying to defuse a lawsuit with a joke about sausage and how she is missing link. He is not cute or scientifically correct. He is cocky, not cunning. He is over the line and overconfident. She is overhead and over it. He will discharge one last shot at her sisterhood, laughingly ask her if she thinks she can fly, and she will look him in the eye and say yes. Now ask me which broomstick to prove it with. 